4chan is a website with a twisted sense of humor and an even more twisted sense of justice. This online community has a storied history of subjecting those who cross them to various forms of digital punishment. And while online mob justice is generally something to be frowned upon, there is something that 4chan has gotten right time and time again, and that's their never-ending and unrelenting commitment to stopping animal abusers. Over the years, several high-profile cases have shown that 4chan is always at ground zero when it comes to online animal abuse cases. They're the first to break the stories and the first to get law enforcement involved. From saving animals to getting abusers convicted to failing miserably, these are the many stories of 4chan's animal rescue efforts. Today's video is sponsored by Geology Skin Care. Look, I'll admit it, longtime viewers know your boy can look a little bit tired on camera sometimes. <laughs> We're talking bags under the eyes, dry skin, you name it. But the kind folks over at Geology are helping me turn that around with their top of the line skincare products. Geology's award winning dark circle eye cream. It's a personal favorite. I love this stuff, man. Staring at a laptop screen all night researching for these videos does a number on your eyes when it comes to dark circles. And while they're not completely gone yet, Geology's eye cream has really helped clear this up for me. I mean, just take a look at me now versus like an old video where I look super cracked out with massive dark circles. Circles. I can't say enough about this dark circle cream, it's amazing. And Geology has skincare solutions for acne, dry skin, and oily skin and more. You get started with Geology by taking their short 30 second online quiz that gauges your personal skincare issues, and using that info they'll hook you up with the products designed to get your skin back on the right track. Outside of dark eye circles, I also tend to have dry skin. Geology hooked me up with their everyday face wash, which I follow up with their moisturizing morning cream. It's a refreshing and exfoliating start to your skin's day. Around bedtime, I use their retinol infused night cream to repair damage done during the day. You can rest easy knowing you're going to be waking up with your skin feeling moist and replenished. So what are you guys waiting for? Head over to geology.com, that's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E.com, and take their free skincare quiz to save up to 70% off your 30-day trial. And make sure you join Geology's Galaxy community for more daily tips, giveaways, and more at discord.gg geology. Thanks to Geology for sponsoring today's video. While most online animal abuse cases involve cats and dogs, there have been instances where more uncommon pets become the victim of twisted individuals. And with that said, our first story will be about an endangered tortoise that unfortunately became the victim of abusive teenagers. The teens likely thought that no one would care for the plight of a lowly tortoise, but 4chan would prove them wrong. This story begins in July of 2014 with two teenage girls from North Florida, 18-year-old Jennifer and 15-year-old Danielle. Presenting as innocent teenage girls, they don't meet your typical animal abuser description, but we'll soon find that's exactly what they were. As on one day, the duo was exploring a wooded area when they would discover a rare gopher tortoise crawling along the ground. Gopher tortoise are the only true tortoise species remaining in Florida and maintain a threatened status due to habitat destruction caused by urbanization. Upon the discovery of this rare reptile, the two decided to take the gopher tortoise home and make it their pet. However, unfortunately for the gopher tortoise, the girl's dedication to it would prove to be short-lived. As when the girls got tired of playing zookeeper, that's when things got dark. And what do I mean by dark? Well, on July 15th, the girls would take a camera, a lighter, and some alcohol and film themselves senselessly killing this poor tortoise. I can't show the graphic video, but this is what happens. In the video, the girls douse the tortoise with alcohol and light it on fire while laughing maniacally. They yell out things like, burn baby burn, and oh, you're scared of us now, aren't you? The tortoise that's now engulfed in flames tries to hide from danger by going into its shell, and it's at this point where one of the girls picks up the tortoise and spikes it down onto the pavement, right onto the street. And the disgusting video ends with the girls laughing and cackling all while they're stomping the tortoise to death, crushing it against the pavement. It's disturbing to say the least, and the fact that they express so much joy in committing the act, I mean, we're dealing with some potential psychopaths here, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you consider the fact that after this took place, one of the girls thought it was a good idea to upload the video to Facebook and YouTube. They were proud of what they had done. 
After being uploaded, several classmates and local residents would stumble upon the gopher tortoise video on Facebook, and they were understandably disturbed by what they had seen. An individual on Facebook going by the name of Ash would be the first to speak out on this wanton violence against the tortoise. Okay, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you go around torturing animals and shit for fun, you're automatically fucked up and need some help. Don't go doing shit like that. I'd beat somebody's ass if I saw someone doing stupid shit like that. Motherfucker's gonna make me go to jail for doing the same shit that they did to that poor animal to them. In the wake of the blowback, Danielle, the 15-year-old involved in the tortoise torture video, would chime in on Facebook to defend the girl's actions. You kids act like you never did anything stupid in your life. The other alleged tortoise killer taunts her Facebook critics by commenting, we are mass murderers. For real, all these little bitches soft as fuck. Oh my god, what the fuck? Why would you get over it? It's not like we took the last one off the planet. Obviously, goes without saying, this is a pretty ignorant statement considering the animal was literally an endangered species. Now, in the grand scheme of things, these girls weren't really facing any major consequences at this point in time. Sure, they were facing harsh words and criticisms from locals on Facebook, but all things considered, they had gotten away with their savagery scot-free but that wouldn't remain the case for long. As shortly after the story had developed on Facebook, it found its way to 4chan's B board, the anything goes random board of 4chan that you'll be hearing a lot about in this video. Word of these tortoise stompers immediately caused outrage site wide and the entire 4chan community rallied together to bring these abusers to justice. Thus began Operation Shellshock. Yes, that was the actual name. Shellshock's mission was simple, use 4chan's enraged masses to spread the story across the greater internet, scry over all available evidence in the case, irrefutably link the perps to the crime, and bring these animal-killing teens to justice. Finding the full names of Danielle and Jennifer proved to be the easiest task as the two had social media presences. But when it comes to attention to detail, 4chan never fails and doxing the names was just the beginning. Using additional metadata from the girls' Facebook pages, 4chan was able to narrow down the tortoise killing to have taken place in the town of Orange Park, Florida. But that's just them getting started. After a meticulous frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the tortoise killing video, board members managed to pinpoint the exact street address and spot on the pavement where the tortoise was killed. This was done by comparing the background environment shown in frames of the video with various Google Street View images taken of the area. And since the tortoise was apparently killed out front of one of the girls' houses, they had found the girls' home address in doing this. 4chan would then send the information they had collected along with archived posts and videos from the girls' Facebook to a variety of media outlets and the local police. And with this, the gopher tortoise killing would become a nationwide viral news event prompting law enforcement investigation into the two young women. A local case of animal abuse caught on camera is under investigation tonight as that video goes viral. The video appears to show teenage girls torturing a small tortoise. Mark, the video is extremely hard to watch and even more disturbing. The teens in the video are heard laughing and appear to be having fun. When burning wasn't enough, they threw it. When throwing it wasn't enough, they stomped it to death. It's just this is sociopathic behavior and is not, not good news. With the media frenzy heating up around this case, many wanted to hear a statement from the parents of the girls and one of the fathers actually would speak up and talk about the situation. The father of one of the girls says that his family has received death threats since the torture video went viral. He says he's outraged by what his daughter did. Is there anything I have to say about it? Yeah, they're very remorseful for what they did and they're gonna go through the court system to get it all figured out. Okay? And whatever the court system hands down, that's what they're going to do. The father did not want to be identified because of all the backlash, but he did say everyone in his house is getting rid of Facebook and smartphones. Florida Fish and Wildlife is currently working with the state attorney's office to determine what charges may be filed. In the wake of the state attorney's office announcement, both Danielle and Jennifer were taken into custody and placed into a youth crisis center where they were to await charges, which were to be determined by the Florida Wildlife Commission. In a media interview from the time, a neighbor who claimed to have witnessed the girls being taken into custody alleged that... One of them was smiling as they were being taken in. This morning, Tesco watched the girls being arrested. I tried to get a picture of her going out into the car, but they was rushing her real fast, but she was smiling all the way to the car. And I was just like, oh my Lord, who's, why are you smiling? You're going to jail. Tesco also tried to record the arrest, 
It's not a good recording, but it gives you the feeling of urgency. You know, I could see her in the back and she was just smiling. After two days in the crisis center, the two girls were officially issued third degree felony charges for animal abuse, as well as second degree misdemeanor charges for killing the gopher tortoise. Once indicted, 18 year old Jennifer was taken to Clay County Jail, while 15 year old Danielle was sent to the town's juvenile detention center to be tried as a minor. And because she was a minor, the outcome of Danielle's charges aren't publicly known. However, Jennifer, she was 18, old enough to be charged as an adult and didn't receive any of this anonymity. Curiously, Jennifer was initially deemed incompetent to stand trial and was released from jail after posting a $15,000 bond. But eventually, she was deemed competent and actually pled guilty for her crime. In the end, Jennifer served just over a month in jail and the matter was wrapped up for good sometime in May of 2016. While technically speaking, Ash on Facebook was the first to break this story, if 4chan didn't pull out their CSI video analysis skills and mass report these girls to the police, it's likely that nothing would have been done about this. While some might consider their tactics questionable, this is actually a pretty clean cut 4chan case. There wasn't any vigilante justice here, they passed it along to law enforcement and authorities did what they were supposed to do. It's a 4chan W through and through. RIP to the gopher tortoise. Our next story, while brief, does show 4chan's zero tolerance policy when it comes to animal abuse. Even folks joking about it can become the target of their collective wrath. Back in 2013, a high school student named Kevin would post a photo to Instagram wherein the menacing teenager can be seen holding a gun to a puppy's head. The photo's caption read, Don't mess with me, I'm a freaking trap lord. While the firearm in the photo turned out to be a plastic replica, the premise of the photo and the distressed look on the dog's face, it immediately outraged those in Kevin's local Instagram friend group. Seeing the pushback against this photo, Kevin would delete it shortly after publishing. But unfortunately for the teen, the internet never forgets and the photo soon found its way to 4chan's b-board. Enraged at the idea of some dumb teenage kid taking borderline abusive animal photos for social media clout, they got to work attempting to ruin his life in any way possible. This bitch needs a good rating, one user says. Another chimes in, let's find out where this guy lives. You fucked up real bad, get ready fool, said another. So users got to work doxing Kevin, digging up anything that they could find about the guy in the hopes of ruining his life and separating him from the animal. One of the first things discovered outside of Kevin's Instagram account was his ask.fm account. For those unfamiliar, ask.fm is a platform that allows folks to ask anonymous questions to account holders. Once the ask.fm page was discovered, board members flooded it with questions regarding the dog and hurled various insults at Kevin. And interestingly, Kevin actually responded to some of these. I hope someone sharts in your face. Kevin says, that's harsh. Fuck you, Kevin. That was kind of hurtful. Who let the dogs out? An interesting question indeed. Do you have a good relationship with your dog? Are you kidding? I fucking love my dog more than any human. Kevin's words expressing his love for his dog wouldn't stop the online raider's inquiry. Eventually, Kevin's full name would be Docs and it was discovered that he attended Tuscarora High School in Maryland. 4chan users would then claim to make calls and send emails to the school staff asking for disciplinary action to be taken on the young man. One user claims that they submitted the photo and Kevin's information to the FBI, and several users claim to have even contacted PETA in regards to the photo. 4chan and PETA, that's not two groups you would expect to work together, but I guess in war, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You know what I'm saying? This 4chan helmed investigation into Kevin would last for several days with people doing anything in their power to strip the dog from this man's possession. However, despite 4chan's persistent investigation into Kevin, it doesn't appear as if the young man ever faced any serious consequences for this photo, nor was there ever an official law enforcement investigation into him. Sure, it's possible that the school or Kevin's parents got wind of this situation and disciplined him privately, but as far as we know, the boy kept the puppy and went on with his life. While the photo was indeed disturbing, at the end of the day, it appeared to be nothing more than a joke using a fake gun to act like a tough guy on social media. One Redditor who knew Kevin in real life actually had this to say about him. I know this kid. I just graduated from Tuscarora last year. He's not a bad kid, but he is the type of kid that would do something like this for attention. 
never really liked him. Seeing that authorities had no interest in punishing Kevin, 4chan would eventually lose interest into the matter, the entire ordeal showcasing just how zero tolerance 4chan's members can be when it comes to this kind of stuff. One can only hope that this scare from 4chan taught Kevin a lesson, and hopefully he's not putting animals in precarious photos for social media clouds anymore. While Kevin's puppy photo didn't result in any physical harm to the animal featured, the same can't be said about our next 4chan animal abuse story. That story being the case of the Vine Kitten Kicker, aka Walter Easley. On July 28th of 2013, 17 year old Orangeburg, South Carolina teenager Walter Easley would upload a six second video of himself kicking a kitten to Vine. The video starts with Walter speaking to the camera, telling a joke about a cat being so spoiled that it only drinks milk and won't eat cat food. The video then cuts to a shot of a kitten at Walter's feet, which is then kicked by Walter and violently careens off the porch. The launched feline spins multiple times in the air for about 15 feet before crashing down into the grass. The startled cat gets to its feet and flees the area in the last moments of the video. It's yet another case of a guy distressing an animal for shocking social media content, but this one's worse than the last because he actually physically harms the animal. The video would see limited traction for about two weeks, but then a Redditor poster found it and posted it to r slash rage where it got over 1300 upvotes. Now Reddit, if you didn't know, is a little bit more strict about their moderations and they have admins everywhere that keep people from doing fun stuff like doxing people. Disclaimer, Wavy WebSurf LLC does not endorse doxing. The previous statement was only said in satire. So 4chan members got to work. Where's this guy living and how can we screw him over and get the kitten to safety? Board members gathered screenshots from the video and began zeroing in on the kicker's home address as well as reporting Walter to both PETA and the police. They also spread the story around the greater internet and made threads on Twitter calling the cat kicker out. Walter, who had an active Twitter account that displayed his full name, actively was mocking 4chan's inquiry into his cat kicking video. 1,419 revines and 993 likes and 456 comments, lol, shit crazy for real. LOL, now I got something to laugh at all day. Yeah, Walter, he was a big tough guy. He wasn't scared of these 4chan nerds. While he was brazen in the early stages of 4chan's investigation into him, Walter's stoicism in regard to this matter would falter in time. As pressure grew from the ravenous internet mob, he began showing signs of fear, as Walter would eventually private his Twitter account and the cat kicking video on Vine would suddenly be removed. Meanwhile, news articles had begun to pick up the story and discuss the event. Backlash surrounding the topic took all forms as internet users began to do things such as create petitions like bring Walter Easley the kitten kicker to justice. 24 hours after 4chan's involvement, Walter's full docs, name, address, and everything was posted and made into a paste bin for the entire internet to see. This document was viewed by thousands and his information passed along to PETA and law enforcement. And of course, there were less productive measures being taken against Walter. Let's just say Papa John's was very busy that day. I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. While practically everyone online was against Walter, around this time you would have a few IRL friends chiming in in Walter's defense on Twitter, claiming he was a good guy, didn't deserve the hate, and that the video was simply a big joke. Joke or not, a cat was kicked. What are you going to say, you kicked the cat ironically? There was no excuse here. Thanks to the incessant reporting by internet users, law enforcement would eventually get involved into the matter. And about a week after the viral attention, Walter Easley was arrested and issued a misdemeanor animal abuse charge. If convicted, he would possibly face up to 60 days in jail. While in custody, Walter reportedly claimed that he didn't actually kick the cat at all. Rather, instead of dealing blunt force, he claimed that he just simply lifted it up with his leg and foot. However, even if this was the case, it doesn't account for the fact that the kitten was clearly distressed from the interaction. You know, being launched like 12 to 15 feet and crashing down onto the ground. Uh, that's not the way to treat a kitten. Whether he kicked or lifted, it was animal abuse. Upon investigation, deputies determined, quote, Walter intentionally inflicted unnecessary pain on the cat by kicking and throwing it for entertainment. From here, Walter was scheduled for a follow-up hearing on September 12th, and at this appearance, he pleaded guilty and apologized for his actions, stating he did what he did to be funny. Due to the widespread online attention surrounding his case, Walter was granted a pretrial intervention that actually sealed his case, so none of the proceedings were publicly known. While he did face punishment, what that punishment was isn't publicly known, and 
Walter's crime wouldn't show up on his criminal record. And the reason for this is just basically boils down to Walter was a minor when this happened. Walter would return to Twitter in the months following the incident, but he vanished from the internet about six years ago. As for the kitten that was kicked, its name was Boots, and in the aftermath of this situation, it was taken away from its owner to receive attention from a vet. The plan was to have the kitten rehomed to a safe environment. Online video even shows the cat during its stay at the vet. What happened to Boots after this point isn't exactly clear. As ambiguous as the outcome of this case may be, it still resulted in justice being brought to the abuser and some measures were taken to ensure the safety of the animals involved. Just know when it comes to social media clouts, putting your pets in dangerous situations is off limits and if you do it, 4chan will have your neck for it. Our next story is a high-profile animal killing case involving 4chan that made international news. The story of the Bosnian puppy thrower. This story begins back in the summer of 2010 when a video was uploaded to YouTube featuring a girl wearing a red hoodie throwing a litter of six puppies into a river. Many of you watching may be familiar with this video, I can't show it, but I'll do my best to explain what happens. Basically, the video features this young woman pulling puppies out of a bucket one by one, grabbing them with one hand, and flinging the helpless pups into a fast-moving river. Someone can even be heard saying, "Wee!" as the dogs are thrown into the water. This was a large, deep, and fast-moving river we're talking about here. There's like little chance that these puppies would have survived this. Naturally, this bizarre footage went viral upon being discovered, and as the video got more attention across Facebook, Reddit, and 4chan, the cruelty showed in the video prompted the internet to seek justice once again. After being notified, YouTube would remove this video in short time, but archives of it were available on LiveLeak. With nothing more than a video and the old YouTube metadata to go off of, 4chan would use their uncanny geolocation abilities to narrow down the search for this potential suspect. The first clue regarding the location and identity of this girl was the fact that the girl can be heard saying a Russian word in this video, that word being Vought. She says this after throwing the last puppy, and the word Vought could be translated into there, or there, it's done. Vought. So 4chan had a general idea of where in the world this girl was located, but obviously they had to get more specific. This is a lot of space we're talking about here. That's when they discovered metadata associated with the profile that posted the original video to YouTube, and it was linked to an individual named Martin. And this Martin individual had a social media account with information that revealed his place of residence to be a town called Bugono in Bosnia. So this discovery actually syncs up with the theory that the puppy throwing took place in a Russian-speaking area. After a thorough analysis of Google Maps, observant 4chan users then correctly deduced that the puppies were thrown in the Verbus River, which was the closest fast-flowing river in proximity to the town. So at this point, they pretty much knew where the throwing took place in Bosnia at the Verbus River, but they didn't know who the girl was yet. Yes, they somehow knew that Martin was connected to the person who did it, but obviously he wasn't the one because it's a girl that threw the puppies. So knowing he was apparently connected, 4chan did a little trial and error investigation here. They began scouring through the man's social media friends list and also looked at other female accounts from the town. They hoped to find a match based on looks alone. Naturally, this resulted in many false leads, people getting falsely accused, and uh, innocent people receiving death threats, but in the eyes of 4chan, they were simply sacrifices for the greater good. They didn't care if anyone was getting caught in the crossfire, they were trying to punish an animal abuser here. Eventually, this trial and error strategy led to a girl named Katya being identified by 4chan and animal rights groups as a possible match, and they turned this lead over to law enforcement. Curiously, shortly after this girl's name was handed over to authorities, Bosnian police announced an investigation into the puppy throwing and revealed that they had identified the girl responsible. Now let me make something clear. Authorities have never publicly revealed the name of their suspect as the individual was a minor. And while the internet has long been confident that this Katya person was the perp, I will avoid showing any photos of the girl and I will not be revealing the girl's full name in the chance that Katya wasn't actually the puppy thrower. In the wake of the investigation being launched, media became heavily involved and it was at this point where Katya reportedly posted the following apology to YouTube. 
My name is Kadya and I would like to apologize for my behavior. The puppies belong to my grandma and she told me to get rid of them because they were only three days and were ill. I didn't know exactly what to do so I thrown them in the river. It was a short death. I did not want to make them suffer. I am really sorry about this. The authenticity of this apology has long been debated and it's unconfirmed if the thrower actually wrote this or if it was a hoax. Many at this point would offer a defense for Katya claiming that she was simply a innocent farm girl who was ordered to do a undesirable task, you know, that of culling extra puppies that the family couldn't take care of. Arguing that urbanized westerners were ignorant to the fact that apparently stuff like this happens in more rural Bosnian areas. But if that really was the case, why is the girl or someone in the background yelling out "wee" while the puppies are being thrown to their death? And if it's just this terrible deed that you had to do, why also film it and upload it to YouTube? Like, it's just hard to argue that this girl didn't get some kind of weird enjoyment out of doing this. In my opinion, punishment is warranted here. At least something, right? Well, and as for punishment, police did intend to get charges pressed on the girl, but they were blocked from doing so. This was because Bosnia's laws regarding the prosecution of minors stated that she couldn't be directly punished and that instead her parents would be held liable for any crime. Reporting from the time indicated that the girl's parents could face possible jail time and a fine of up to approximately $6,400 USD. However, no such penalties were ever issued. Why? That remains somewhat of a mystery to this day. Perhaps once authorities got the girls and the parents' side of the story, maybe they thought that this was less of the psychopathic act that the internet portrayed it as initially and felt as if it was more or less an impoverished family getting rid of some puppies that were sick and they couldn't take care of them or something. Neither explanation really sets well with me, but regardless, no one got punished for the puppy throwing. Naturally, with this being the outcome, folks online were outraged and felt that Katya escaped justice using some Bosnian legal loopholes. But in all honesty, there was really nothing anyone could do about this. Even 4chan was powerless to the dated ethical codes and laws of the Bosnian legal system. While 4chan wasn't able to avenge the pups, this case goes to show the ferocious dedication they have to punishing would-be animal abusers. Even if you're throwing puppies in a river located in bumfuck Egypt and Bosnia, they'll track you down. Before we move on, an interesting footnote to this case. At some point during this story, a woman came forward to the media claiming to have found six puppies on the shore of a river near the area where the throwing incident took place, and these puppies were all alive. The media would come out to investigate, and while visiting, they took photos of these six puppies that the woman claimed to have found by the river. Obviously, many speculated that these were the six puppies thrown in the river, and it was like this happy ending scenario where they were found alive. But this claim has never truly been vetted and many point to it being a hoax, as it's possible to see differences in the fur of the puppies with the ones thrown in the river being black and white and the rescued ones being black and brown. So for you optimists out there, there is a small chance that the puppies did survive. Our next story is the Mac Daddy of all 4chan animal rescue efforts, and it's one that many of you have likely heard of before. It's the original 4chan cat abuse story. It's the story of Kenny Glenn and Dusty the Cat. This story begins all the way back on February 15th of 2009 when a YouTube channel called Glenn Spam One uploads two disturbing videos back to back. These shocking videos featured two young men, one recording and one physically abusing a gray cat named Dusty. This is by far the most graphic video in this compendium and I definitely cannot show it, but I will describe to you what happens. The video begins with a masked individual referring to himself as Timmy saying, quote, some people know me as the animal abuser. Timmy then walks into the bathroom and opens the shower stall, revealing a visibly frightened gray cat named Dusty who is hunkered down in the corner of the shower. The cat appeared to have been trapped in the stall by the boys for some time and was clearly anxious. Timmy then proceeds to pick up the cat by the neck and slam it against the shower wall numerous times. Then Timmy holds the cat down to the shower floor with one hand and strikes its head and back with his fist, all while the cameraman yells and laughs maniacally. The cat, now groaning in distress, is then lifted up and placed face first against the shower head as Timmy turns on the water, spraying the cat with focused jets in its eyes. 
The cat is then released and the video ends with loud pained meows coming from Dusty, with the battered feline laying helplessly in the corner of the shower. But this wasn't the end of Dusty's abuse as a second video shows the boys attacking the cat on a different occasion. The second video begins with a shot of Dusty resting on the bathroom floor before he's suddenly approached by the boys and sprayed in the face with an unknown irritating liquid. He's then repeatedly struck by Timmy on the head and back and stomach. This goes on for about a minute until the video ends with more pained groans from Dusty. These videos were textbook examples of animal abuse and almost immediately generated disgust in the video's comment section. This was truly a first of its kind scenario in terms of YouTube and people in this comment section had a feeling of urgency. Something had to be done to save this poor animal. And that's when these videos found their way to 4chan's B-Board. Upon viewing these heinous videos, board members made it their goal to unmask the anonymous individuals responsible, bring them to justice, and save Dusty. They got to work meticulously analyzing the video and looking through the Glenn Spam 1 YouTube channel for any identifying metadata on the account. After a thorough analysis of the Glenn Spam 1 account, many board members came up with a theory that Timmy the Cat Abuser's real name was Mike Glenn. This theory stemmed from an old comment that was posted to the channel by an account using the same name. You know, Glenn Spam, Mike Glenn, kind of similar, right? This actually resulted in board members identifying a man in New York named Mike Glenn, and this individual's address was doxxed and the man was reported to law enforcement for the abuse. The man was harassed and even visited by law enforcement who, upon visiting him, debunked the claim and the lead was proven to be false. It was a swing and a miss, but 4chan went back to the drawing board and actually pulled up some useful information this time. A break in the case came when users discovered that the Glenn Spam 1 username had actually been used on another website called HaitiWild.com, which was bizarrely enough a Haitian current events website. The Glenn Spam 1 account on the Haiti website contained some identifiable information, including the zip code 73505 which narrowed down the Glenn Spam 1 account owner to being a resident of the city of Lawton, Oklahoma. And with this Lawton, Oklahoma zip code in mind, that's when 4chan users got on Facebook and started looking through accounts from the area trying to find anyone that was a teenager with the first or last name Glenn. And eventually, they stumbled across the Facebook page of a teenager named Kenny Glenn. 4chan also discovered that Kenny Glenn had a brother named Weston, and it was suspected that Weston was the cameraman. And then they really started putting some dots together. Using images taken from Kenny's Facebook page, they compared the interior of Kenny's house with frames from the videos, and they discovered that a drum set, a beige wall, green carpet, and some wooden trim seen in Kenny's bedroom perfectly matched up with that of a room shown briefly in one of the abuse videos visible through an open doorway. With this compelling circumstantial evidence, it was clear that Kenny Glenn and Weston were very likely the ones behind these abuse videos. Once this connection was made, people began voicing their anger at the boys in a variety of ways, from posting pictures of themselves with their cats insulting Kenny and supporting Dusty, to digging up Kenny's entire social media history and unearthing racist comments, and even creating a full docs on Kenny and his family which was hosted on several privately owned websites alongside the videos themselves to ensure that the evidence of what they had done couldn't disappear. These websites included KennyGlenn.net and NeverForgetDusty.com. With the docs now out there, people had Kenny Glenn's family phone number, 4chan users called the house with prank calls and let's just say made Papa John's really busy again. Some of these individuals though were actually making serious calls to the Kenny Glenn family home trying to get in contact with Kenny Glenn's parents. One of these individuals reportedly actually spoke to Kenny Glenn's mother and when she was informed about what had happened said that the boys would be punished and it was later discovered that that punishment was Kenny Glenn's bike was taken away. Eventually with the internet reporting Kenny Glenn to pretty much every outlet possible, law enforcement would eventually get involved. The local news would publish articles revealing that the two brothers were to meet with investigators and the district attorney over what had happened. The sheriff would comment that the teens would receive animal cruelty charges and they would investigate to see if these were the only instances that Dusty had been abused. Around this time, Dusty was taken out of the home to be examined for injuries by a veterinarian. While Dusty was being examined at the vet, police would actually make a statement coming forward revealing that they had discovered a third abuse video and revealed that Kenny Glenn and his brother had participated in the abuse of another cat. 
This cat was also sent to the vet to be examined. The language from law enforcement at this point in the story really made it seem like they were taking this case extremely seriously, you know, trying to press charges on the boy and getting these cats taken care of and rehomed. But an anonymous tip sent to NeverForgetDusty.com would sort of draw this notion into question. This individual would claim that the Glenn family actually had connections with the local judge and individuals high up in the local media, essentially alleging that there was an ongoing conspiracy to get Kenny Glenn and his brother off the hook for the abuse videos. The tipper says, this info needs to be out there. There isn't going to be justice for Dusty. They are just waiting for it to quiet down and give the boys a slap on the wrist, by which time it will be too late to do anything. The Glens have a lot of power in town. And as more time passed and updates became more few and far between, folks started to believe this anonymous tipper's suggestion that there was some sort of conspiracy at play. The last piece of news to come out about the Kenny Glenn abuse case occurred on March 3rd of 2009, when it was said that animal abuse charges had already been filed against the brothers and that the sheriff had compiled a list of possible new homes for the cats which they would be adopted out to soon. And for most, this was the update that placated everyone and folks began moving on with their life feeling as if the situation was resolved. However, 10 months later, a shocking development would be published to KennyGlenn.net. Quote, my name is Redacted. I live in Lawton, Oklahoma, and I have firsthand knowledge of the fact that the two cats being abused in that video have not gone anywhere but back home to his abuser. I know for a fact that the Glens and Sheriff Stradley are best buddies. I have witnessed Kenny, Christopher Glenn, telling the sheriff that I'll see you when you come over to the house later. Nobody has been punished. The cats are still where they came from in the first place. And for personal reasons, I can't give you any more info than that. I'm just letting you know that absolutely nothing happened to the animal abuser. The media ordeal was a big show to make the public think the abuser got punished. Because Kenny Glenn was a minor, his criminal record would be sealed. And if he did actually receive punishment from quote unquote, animal abuse charges, there would be no way for anyone to know. But according to this first-hand account, they claimed that nothing was ever done at all and it was just a big show. In all reality, nobody really knew what happened to Kenny Glenn or Dusty, they just assumed and took the word of law enforcement and local media. In response to this update, the owner of KennyGlenn.com created a section of the website called How You Can Help, which detailed a plan to ensure once and for all that Kenny couldn't escape repercussions. This plan was to bring bad publicity to Kenny Glenn Glenn's father's oil company so that I guess the father would be forced into somehow punishing Kenny for the cat videos. But needless to say, there weren't very many people involved in the Kenny Glenn case at this point 10 months later and folks just didn't really follow through with this and nothing became of the oil company plan. As of this day, it's still unknown if Kenny Glenn ever went to trial for his alleged crimes, and it's also not known what became of Dusty the Cat. But for those of you worried that Kenny Glenn escaped this situation unscathed, you may be comforted by the fact that anecdotal testimony submitted online by Kenny's school classmates suggested that his teenage life was essentially ruined by this controversy. One classmate reported that Kenny was kicked out of school for some time, and after returning, he had to be escorted from class to class by a counselor. They say that with the truth out there, students refused to talk to him and he had no friends at school. Another classmate reports that Kenny was compelled to seek mental health counseling until he was 18 years old. And it's even been reported that Kenny Glenn legally had his name changed in an effort to disassociate himself with the abuse videos. Seems like 4chan really did a number on the teenager. But what has become of Kenny Glenn in recent years isn't exactly clear. But there is one possible update out there regarding Kenny Glenn's fate. In late 2016, a Reddit user by the name of Topatok claimed to be Kenny Glenn himself in a response to a post about the correlation of animal abusers going on to become serial killers. The comment read, Kenny Glenn here, still haven't killed anyone, but I'll keep you posted. There's very little proof that this was actually Kenny Glenn, but this Topa Talk account would actually go on Reddit several months later and host an AMA reflecting on the cat abuse videos. What I did was wrong. I made a mistake, but my life should not be defined by it. That is not who I am. I am here to clear any misconceptions about me and somehow show that I am not a monster. Kenny would claim that he regretted the situation and that his treatment of Dusty was exaggerated for the camera, but admits that it was abusive. At points, he implies that the video was intended to be some kind of reactionary piece and said it was intended to get a rise out of people. 
This alleged Kenny Glenn accounts also claims that in the conclusion of his case, he had to pay legal fees and eventually adopted out Dusty to an older woman in his area. Again, I want to stress that there's really no way to know if this was actually Kenny Glenn, but the poster is oddly specific at times and paints a coherent and believable narrative. If you want to read the thread, I'll have it linked below. While it's extremely frustrating that the fate of Kenny Glenn and Dusty the Cat are ambiguous, this case is remarkable for being the one that truly established 4chan as ardent defenders of animals and punishers of alleged abusers. This was the first time it happened on the site. They may not always be successful in rescuing abused pets, but 4chan and its users have a proven track record of doing everything possible to separate animals from their abusers. And if they can't get law enforcement and the courts to punish you, they'll make it their mission to enforce vigilante justice, ruin your life, and ensure everyone knows you're an absolute piece of shit. But that, my friends, was a collection of the many efforts of 4chan to rescue animals and punish alleged abusers. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comment section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.